in English. If I switch over to Afrikaans, please just stop me. If you have any questions as we go, just raise your hand. Izan will keep a look out for people that have questions. It's better to ask them as we go. Uh, at the end, it's just going to cause confusion. If you have heard more than installed, you're welcome to open it and follow as I go. The database that I'm currently sharing is just a demo database. It's nobody's data. It's just test data. And then I said 9 to 11, it might be a bit sooner, about an hour, hour and a half, but we'll see as we go. And I will, what I'm going to explain today is just the very basics of Herdmaster for people that need a refresher and also that's completely unfamiliar with Herdmaster. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to show you is your animal list screen and how to move around in the screen. So if you open your herd master, if you're on the demo database, it would look like this. You might, if you're still on the free trial, you would have an Australian name here. It would say ABRI, and it's an Australian Angus breed, but that's fine. If your license at yours would also change to this screen. So this is your basic screen when you log into herd master. The menus at the top is the menus that you'd also have on your right hand side. If you're on the trial, you most probably won't have the right hand side options, but they function the same. If you click at the top, you have animals where you can find your animal list. And on the right hand side, you also have your animal list. So either or it's the same. So this is your animal list screen where you'd be able to see all your active as well as your inactive animals. Bottom right hand side, there's a block that says show inactive. So if you untick it, you will only see your active animals. Off site is in Herdmaster, when you set up your database, you have a default location. So if you have more than one main property, one would be your default location. And then the second main property, it would see as off site. So you would then tick that block to see all your current animals, which is active or inactive, depending on what you choose at the bottom. So everywhere in Herdmaster where you see these columns, you can drag the columns and sort them the way you want it arranged. So all you do is you click on the heading, left click, and then just drag it to where you want it. Some computers are set to forget this change at some point in time. Usually if you just drag it, you don't have to save, you just close it next time you open, it's the same. But some computers do not keep that change and that's a permissions setting. Also in this screen, all these headings, you can sort ascending or descending. So between the column heading, and this little funnel, you just click there. Then there's a little triangle that appears. If you'll see if I click on it, it changes. So it's either ascending or descending, depending on how you want it sorted. So you can change, you could filter it on birth year or whatever the case may be. It's nice to be able to do this, especially if you want to make worksheets on birth year. You would filter them on ya. Yeah. You can also do it on the sex code. You can also create a filter to do that. It's just quicker this way. I will show you how to do a filter just now. Then to search on the screen. On top left is a search term box. So you can start typing in your tag and you'll see that it's searching as far as I'm typing and then it will bring up the animal that I entered. At times if you try to find an animal and you can't see it just tick show inactive it could be an inactive animal. You can decide if you want to search on animal tag or any of these other options maybe you have the electronic ID but you don't have the visual ID. 
you can then on the search field select electronic ID and then type in your number. Mainly animal tag is the one that's used, but you do have other options as well. I'm just going to change it back to tag. Okay, then these menus. A file would be where you make a, a backup or you would restore a backup from. Data entry is where all your new data gets entered. View edit if you want to see what you've done or if you want to go and change something. Animals is where you would add your new animals, um, your calves or any dam or sire. Contacts, you can enter any contacts into Herd Master, whether it's a vet or who you buy feed stuffs from, uh, who buys animals from you, any contact that you want to keep record of, you can enter here. Yeah? Report, there's a whole bunch of reports in Herd Master. If on any of these reports you can't find exactly what you're looking for, we could always use a custom reporter and then tell it uh, what we want it to look like. The only important thing to remember is on the backup, it doesn't keep backup of your custom reports. It is in a separate file, but it's not part of your main backup because it, the data gets too much. But there is a file where you can restore that from. Setup is your main setup in your program. Usually you would do one main setup and then you won't change anything again. Read specific codes. Usually it's best to not just enter any codes into there um, or create your own codes and then use that because if you create codes that's not society standard and you need to send information to the society using those codes, they're not going to be able to record the data because they're not familiar with the codes and it's not part of their system. So if you want to add something there, just double check before you do that. If it's commercial and you're not sending data anywhere, then, then you can add codes because you're not sending anything to society. Utilities is not something that you would use often. Um, I would mainly use that. It's where you need to recalculate IDs or bulk change IDs if something went wrong. Visual Farm is where you would set up a Google image or a Maps image of your farm. And then you can plot out your camps on this image. So instead of using an animal movement and saying I've moved animal from camp one to camp two, you can do that with visual farm. View, you won't use those, you won't use help. There is a manual in help. Um, and then also you can check your licensing info from the screen. So you would go help about. And there you would see what your license number is, what version of herd moss you're on, and what your expiry date is. If you're on a trial, you won't have a number in here. It would just say trial. And then you can also access Team Viewer from the screen. If you don't have it on your computer and you need me to log on, you would just go to help and you would say remote assistance. At times, Team Viewer recently started giving some problems to some clients. They if they get an error saying a proxy server settings or something, I also use AnyDesk. So between the two, I am able to log on to assist. Okay, that's it for this screen. Let me show, go on to the next screen, which is your animal details. If there's any questions now for this part, you're welcome to raise your hand. Okay, let me go to the animal details screen. So to access your animal details screen, what you would do is you would either double click on an animal or at the bottom it says details. So either or you will access animal details.
So this screen is information relating to one specific animal. Just find one with more information. Okay, this one looks better. So you would have your animal tag. If you enter an animal and you've made a mistake with a tag, you can't just click on it and change it. It's not going to allow you to change it. That is just to rule out human error. You can, however, re-tag an animal tag. So if you've done something wrong, you can always add a re-tag and just give it a new tag number. It will also keep record of the previous tag. Electronic ID. If you have it, you can enter that. National ID is usually the computer number with a society. Then you would have the dam and sire. If you enter a new animal and the dam and the sire is not part of your database, you won't be able to select them Yeah. You would first need to add the dam and the sire before you can say it's the mother or father of one of the new calves. Most important information when entering a new dam or sire is make sure that the ID is the same that it is at the society. Otherwise, when you send through the new calf to the society and they look at the dam's number and there's just an extra space, they're not going to be able to find it. So double check that the ID is correct and then also remember the sex code. You don't need to enter all the other information for the dam, especially if it's not your animal and you only want to be able to send registrations through. You don't have to enter all the information. Unless, of course, you want to, you're welcome to enter as much as you want. Then you have your date of birth, sex code, and then fate. Fate is for cancellations. So either when animals have been sold, stolen, died, you would put in a fate code and you would get a fate date. Remember when you enter information in Herdmaster, you, the calf might have been weighed today or born today, and only in a week's time you enter the new data. Remember that it's going to see the date you enter the data. So if it's not born on that date and it was a week ago, you need to go and change the date. If you've made a mistake and you've entered data on that specific day, you can always go and change the date. Fight codes would differ from society to society. Okay, what happens now? It sees that I've clicked on fate. Now it's asking automatically if I want to make this animal active or inactive. I'm just going to say no. And then fate reason. Fate reason would be blank. If lightning hit the animal and you want to put that in there, you can type in your reason. Your reason codes will build as you go. So on the next animal, there would be a drop down that you can select. It's not a complete must to do this. It's just if you want to keep record of it. Then, sorry, this screen is in the way and I'm just going to make it smaller. Okay, top right hand side, you have the society info, usually the animal tag, as well as the society ID and the tattoo is the same. If you sent data to the society and it says there's no society ID, it means you have your animal tag, but your tattoo or society, or society ID is blank. Make sure that that is in because when you send information to the society, it's not linking it to the tag. It's going to use these two. Also, some of these societies, when you enter an animal tag, a lot of people prefer putting in zero. So if this was animal number one, I just want to do that, it's going to be zero, zero, one. But the societies don't use the one. They take the zeros out. So it looks like that. When it sorts, if your animal tag looks exactly the same, it sorts numerically incorrect because it's going to put 11 under one, which is a bit of a pain if you're trying to sort your animals numerically. So what you could do is your animal tag could have the zeros in so that numerically your animal tags um, sorts correctly 
and then your society ID into two, you could take the zeros out. That you just change in your setup. So when you enter a new animal, it will automatically um, put in the correct, it will calculate the society ID and the tattoo in the correct format. Regal status is just your registration status. And there's a date as well. Read info, you can enter if it was an embryo cough, you can enter as much information as needed on the screen. EBVs, Earth Master does not calculate EBVs. What you could do is the society could send you an EBV file, which could be imported. Or you can use your own member login and go to download files and download the EBVs and import them. Just take a note that some there's I think there's three different EBV files on the society's website or the BriePan website. The one is PDF and I think there's a CSV as well and then a .dat file. The PDF one you cannot import. The easiest one to import is the one that says dot dat. It's D A T at the end. That you can import into Herdmaster to have these EBVs. That screen you won't use defects if you want to keep record of anything. Pictures you can put in as much pictures as you like. The only important thing to remember with pictures is if you move your folder on your computer and you decide you do not want it under your documents anymore, you now want it on your desktop. It's going to lose the path of the picture. So you would have to go and select the pictures again from scratch, which is okay if you don't have too much photos, but if you have used a thousand photos, that's a big work. So the best would be is to make sure that your initial picture file is where you want it and do not move it. Days to carving data. In herd master, we have two fights a normal fight code that an animal, let's say, has died, and a days to carving fight code. She, there was a mating, but there's no calf. Usually, the days to carving fight data is entered at the end of the mating season so that you can see who was mated and didn't give you any calves. It's important to do this because it's going to influence your cow's intercalving period. So it's important to fill that in as well and also send that to the society. This is not something that you would use. It would, submissions is just information that was sent to the society and that comments if you want to enter in comments. Gene probe is not one that you would use. Now the bottom half of the screen. Overview, you'll see it's going to show your location of the animal, how many times this animal has been weighed, lifetime, average daily weight gain, if there was any procedures on this animal, and when last this animal was weighed. Additional is where you would see who the owner or the breeder is. Usually it's best to keep your default under owner for owner and breeder. On some information that you send to the society, you need to select owner and breeder. And if you put in any other owner, it's not going to give you all the animals. So if I put this one on, let's say on that owner code, and I send information to the society, it's not going to pick up this animal because it can only send information to the society that's under my own ownership. This screen, you will also only fill in what you need. This is automatically selected by which your database is set up. This is an SA Wagyu one. At the top you'll see it says SA Wagyu. Horn status color, only what you need. Weights. If you need to enter weights on an animal, if it's one specific animal you can use this screen. If it's a lot of animals, data entry is faster. So if you have 10 weights on this animal, you would be able to see it on the screen. If you want to enter a new weight, you would use the plus. If you did something wrong and you entered a weight twice, you can select one and delete it. Deleting an animal is not that easy. 
if you want to delete an animal and you you would see that it gives you an, an option where it says it can't delete this animal because it's linked to another one. So if you, let's say, for instance, want to delete a dam, but she's linked to three or four calves, it's going to give you a warning to say that you can't delete her because she's linked to other animals. You would first need to go and take off the link before you can delete that animal. But usually it's best to not delete anything unless you know it's a definite mistake and rather just make an animal inactive. If you want to add a weight, you would click on the plus, you would enter the weight. Let's put in a weight. The date it was recorded, let's say it was the 20th. Observation code. Is it a yearling weight? Is it a weaning weight? Is it a mature weight? Management group and performance groups are the same. I'm just going to say performance group one. You need to, when you create a database and you, you if Herdmaster doesn't have the performance group entered automatically, you would need to go and create them. So in performance group, mainly they work on three, one being natural, to show three sick, it's just to say that an animal is performing better or worse than other animals um, because they were sick or they had extra feed, whatever the case may be. If you want to enter any notes, you can do that there and then just say add weight. If you get a warning and it says the weight is out of the valid parameters, it means that the weight is not in the parameters as set in Herdmaster. Each breed has their own parameters. That's default that they know the animals more or less usually weigh on a certain age. What we could do, I know with the drought, a lot of the animals weighed less than the minimum, but you can change that in the setup. So you can just let me know, then we can just change it in the setup and make it less. Weight ratios can be calculated. Movements, if you want to move an animal from one camp to the next. Traits, any traits recorded against an animal, whether it be hip height or docility. Each society also has their own set of codes that they use. I think most of them are more or less the same, but they're not the same for all the societies treatments, any vaccines or dip, you can enter here. Yeah. The treatments is a bit tricky to get started off with because you need to go and create administration methods and then you need to go and create the treatment type. And then for that type, let's say it's a vaccine and you have five different vaccine types. And then you can also go and create batches for those vaccines. Preg tests, usually this is done as a, um, a data entry because it's usually done on more than one animal, but you can do it on the screen as well. You would be able to see how many matings are on this animal or on the female animals, progeny, any calves. On the screen, you would see you'll be also able to see age of the first calf, her intercalving and how many natural calves she's had. Embryos, pedigree, it's got some pedigree, so I can see dam and sire. Sales, you can enter sales in Herdmaster. It does not take your place of your financial system like QuickBooks or Pastel, but you are able to enter sales information on the screen. If you want to go back and look at information, you can diary, anything that you want to keep note of on the specific animal. Pictures again. Worksheets, I'll show you how to do a worksheet. Worksheets and filters are used to group animals together, but I'll get into that now. Documents, any important documents, whether it's society documents, vet information that you want to keep record of, you can scan it and 
entered onto a specific animal, keeping in mind that the same with the pictures. Do not move the folder, it's going to lose the path, and then the whole document is missing, then you need to redo it. That last one, you won't use. You will also see at the top in the middle, there's a little arrow where you can just go to the next animal. You don't have to go out and click on every animal if you want to go down the line. Okay. Next would be worksheets and filters, but any questions so far? It seems I can carry on. Okay, let me show you worksheets and filters. Worksheets is animals that you want to group together. So you decide which animals you want and put it in a worksheet. Usually dams that's kept together or birth years, your breeding seasons are the ones that they use to group them together. And then there's also a filter. A filter, you give the system criteria and it would find the animals for you. So to create a worksheet, you would use your animal list screen. You can click on an animal, you'll see it turns blue. If they Follow. You keep in shift and you scroll to where you want to go. If the animals are random, you keep in control. And then you left click again to select those animals. Bottom right, you would then click on worksheet. On this drop down, it's going to give you all the worksheets that you have available. If you want to create a new one, just type in the name. You say, okay. It's going to ask you if you're sure you want to add them. You just say yes. An animal can be on as many worksheets as you like. There's no limit. And then you can also take animals off a worksheet. And if you have too many worksheets, you can also delete worksheets if there's old ones that you're not using anymore. When you start off creating worksheets. The best is to, to decide whether you're going to start off with dates or names. It's just easier if they all look the same to try and find a specific worksheet. So these animals are all on the worksheet now. When you enter new data into Herdmaster, click on refresh just so that it sees the change. Sometimes you add an animal and then you immediately go and try and find that calf and then you can't find the calf. Just click on refresh, it will bring it up. So on this drop down screen, where it says active worksheet, click on the drop down, you'll see there's my worksheets, it's alphabetically, there's the one that I just created and these are the animals that I selected. When you go to setup, there's also a worksheet option. Here you can see all the worksheets that you have. Let's select that one. There you'll see all the animals that's on that worksheet. And then if you select an animal and move it across to the right, it will take that animal off that worksheet for you. You'll just say update. Then that animal has been removed. If I click on delete, it's going to delete the whole worksheet. Then to use a filter, go to setup, filtering, animal filtering. Click on add filter and give it a name. Then you would decide what you want to filter on. I'm going to say, let's filter on birth year. 
equal to 2020. I'm going to add another line. Let's say we want sex code female. And then we test the filter. If it doesn't give you any animals, you know you've done something wrong if you know they're supposed to be animals. Where it gets tricky is if you are trying to find information between date ranges. Then you would need to use equal and then greater and smaller as. And sometimes the people just flip those two around, then you don't get any animals. Just go and swap them and test your filter again. If all else fails, just let me know, then I can have a look for you. Let's see if we can find this filter. Let's close it. Open my animal list. Training two, there it is. Remember, if you have a worksheet or a filter selected and you are looking for a specific animal, you are not going to find it. Let's try and find that animal, BBB12279. So now I'm going to select a worksheet. See, it's not giving me anything. Just make sure those fields are blank at the top. There's the animal that I tried to find. Any questions for worksheets and filters? Um, I've got a question that I'd like to ask. Um, yes. Um, say I've got a, a whole lot of females that are calving at the moment. Okay. And, um, I want the dam and the sire. And I want a space left open to write the calf's number down. Can a person create such a file? Okay, so you want it basically like an Excel document. Yeah, I want I want I want to be able to um have a worksheet where there's the, the dam and the sire and then a space that's left open that's I can write the calf's number down okay. that she's not calf. And then the next okay. time I come back to the worksheet, um she must still be there and then the number of the calf must be entered in already so that i don't have to you know um, do it again okay again. let me show you a, a yard sheet that might be what you are looking for to do a yard sheet that is something that you can print and give to whoever is going to work with the animals in the field and you can tell them exactly what you are looking for. So let's look at a yard sheet. Bottom left, you just give it a, say add new template. Okay. Let's give it a name. I want to see the sire and the dam. You can use 10 columns on a yard sheet. Yeah. So select, or if you can't find what you're looking for there, you can select at the bottom, you just type in your column name. Okay. I'm going to say- Obviously, obviously you're gonna have a birth date also there. We can, um, date of birth. I'm just gonna type in your tag. I'm going to say, Process. Now it's going to ask you which worksheet you want to use. Let's take the last one I created. So I select the worksheet. You can also select the filter. Mm -hmm. If they're not on a worksheet or a filter, you can search animals one by one. I'm just going to say select all at the bottom, green arrow to the right and say, okay. Let's just see what it gives us. 
Okay, so you have your animal tag, your date of birth, sire and dam. And then I created a column that said tag. So all in all these fields, you can enter whatever information you are looking for. You can also print this and you can also save this. All right. Well, look for what you're looking for. Yeah. Now, once I've entered the tag number. Yes. Um, and I come to the next, next time I come and I, I print out, will that tag number be there? Yes. You'll see mine has got tags in already because the calf has uh, been created. So it's got calf, date of birth, dam and sire. All right. You you must probably need to create a worksheet on the dams so that you can select that worksheet when creating this yard sheet. Yeah. So you a, a dam tag and then a sire tag, date of birth, and then a blank where you put the calf tag in. Yes. Remember the date of birth that it selected here is this main animal tag. So okay. you would have... Let's quickly change that. So you are going to have, we don't want a damn tag. And let's say calf tag and date of birth. Because your calves have not been created yet. So this will be your, let's say a dams 2020 worksheet. Yeah. So this, this is going to be your dam. Yeah. Sire tag, calf tag, you need to enter. And, and then uh, date of birth, calf, and weight or color or whatever else you want. Okay. So yeah. do that. You go to reports, other, your sheet. Your sheet. Okay. Now well, that's going to work perfectly. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Any other questions before I carry on? Okay. I've only got two more things that I want to go through which is adding animals and then data entry of weights and traits. So to add a new calf, you could use the menu at the top, which is animals, add calf, or if you're in your animal list, at the bottom, you can say add and add calf from there. When you add a new calf, you can search for the dam tag. You'll see if you select it yeah, at the top on the left side or on the right hand side of your screen, it shows you which animal it's going to record the calf to. It will always remember the last calf tag that you used. It's important to check that when the new year starts and you have a new year that you need to use when adding your animals because it's automatically going to use the previous year. So you would either record without mating. If there was a mating recorded against this animal, you can change, select, choose selected mating. The matings would all be on the screen listed. And then you can also add new and create a new mating from the screen. I'm going to say record without mating. Double check carving date. It's giving me the last date that I recorded on just now. I changed the date to the 20th. Let's make it the first. Record without mating. Some of these fields that are busy writing out of the program, they're not being used anymore. Usually carving is, is still being used one being easy, five being difficult, birth weight of the calf, 
dam's weight. Birthing status is not something that's used anymore. Other score and rearing status is also not used anymore. Then number in birth, if it were twins, you would put in a two, and then it would automatically allow you to add the next animal. And then performance groups. I'm selecting one. You can also type in any notes and you would say continue. So it remembered that my previous tag was two triple zero four. Now it's giving me two triple zero five. Electronic ID, if you have it, you can enter it on this screen. National ID, which is your computer number, is generated from the society that can be imported. You'll see it automatically generated my society ID, my prefix, and my suffix. Suffix, you can also put the name in of the animal. Remember to change your sex code. Birth year, it will automatically adjust according to your date of birth. If I used a mating to create this calf, the sire would have been entered automatically. You can click on those three dots to enter the sire. If you have the tag, you can start typing. Then you would enter other information that you want to keep record of. Color, etc. I'm not going to go through all of the fields. If the animal was purchased, you can tick there and say this animal was purchased. If the contact is in your contact group, you can say who you purchased the animal from. And then also worksheets. So you can select on which worksheets you want this animal. Or if you're entering new calves, you can create a new worksheet, give it a new name, and then enter all the calves. And then just on this screen, on the worksheet tab, select that new worksheet and say you want to enter all these calves onto this new worksheet. You can either then go to next animal or save and finish. Just want to copy the tag. Now it's saying I did record a calf on her the other day. I'm just going to say yes, I want to because it's for training purposes. Let's see if I can find that animal and there's the animal that I've just entered. Any questions on data entry for calves? I'll quickly show you, you can do a normal data entry as well. If you've purchased oh. animals. I've, I've got when, a question on, yes? on, on the entering of the, of, the, of, of the data capturing of the calf. Yes. If you go to the first screen of your data capturing where you have the ease of calving and the, 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 day, the birth weights. Yes, and, yes. And also your uh, matings. I found that if I if I have the the, the sire's name, I, I click on the dam and then I'd say add new mating and I'd add the, the sire there already and then I'll I'd click on record mating instead of record without mating and it will actually show you the the um, mating done already. Yes, you can do it that way. If you when have you add, in previously, when you've, added your, when you've added your when you added your mating, then then it automatically shows your mating. You don't have to go and do that, that second step in the, in the in the next screen. Okay. Yes, you can also do it that way. Okay. Yep. Now my question is. I forgot to put in the, the ease of carving, and I forgot to put in the the the, work, the, the birth weight. How do I make, how do I fix that problem? Okay, let me cancel this screen. I'm just going to say yes. Okay, so you have a birth weight that you forgot to enter. What you would do is you would. Let's just see if it's going to give it to me on this screen. What you would do is you would double click, go to that calves information. Oh, okay, yes, and then I'd go to the-, the On the weight the screen. And then add it there, okay. Yes, All you right. can add it there. Okay, and then the ease of carving. Just wanna see on all these. 
should be able to let you change it on this screen. It's giving me carving date. Let me just see where it would allow us to change. Won't it be under EBVs? No, it shouldn't because EBVs is calculated automatically. It should be under this screen. Let's just see if it's on this screen. I see what you're saying. It doesn't want to give you an option to enter. Um, can't you yeah. add it as a trait, maybe? Calving ease. Yeah, I think it's not right. Let's quickly check traits. Yes, it does record it as a trait. Um, view edit traits. Yes, I have carving eaves in here. So is answer correct? What you then just do afterwards yeah. is add it as a normal trait. You'll see mine, it does record carving ease as a trait. Okay, so if I haven't added it, how do I add it then? So what you would do then is if it's one specific animal, let's use that one, the same as weights, Yes. you just go to traits. Okay. There You'll you go. see it's oh, got a carving okay. ease already on you, but you would click on the plus and then oh. just find carving ease code, which is for all the societies at CE. Yeah. Okay. Right, thank you. No problem. Any other questions before I show you how to just enter a normal animal? Okay, if you just want to enter an animal that you've purchased, if a person that you buy the animals from, if they've got Herdmaster, you can create an extract from within Herdmaster, they can send you that file and we can import that information. You can also import information from the society. But if it's one or two or three animals, rather enter them manually. When you import information from the society, they can't send you only one or two animals. They send your whole database. And what happens is if you import animals into herd mass and you import everything again, if you do that too often, it's data over data over data over data. And then your database, at some point, it's going to get corrupt. But if you know you're going to enter a whole bunch of new data or do an import, backup. Do a backup. The most important thing you can do is do a backup. Do not interrupt your backup. I had a client the other day, their latest backup didn't work. They interrupted the, the backup and then it got corrupted. Also remember that we do not keep copies of your backup. I do not have anybody's data only way you can salvage data is if you're with a society and they send you an extract of the data if you have 50 new calves and you haven't sent the registration through to the society those are going to be missing and you would need to re-enter them backups are kept under your my documents folder in herdmaster under herdmaster backups you can change that path. I do have clients that change the path so that it goes to OneDrive because if your computer crashes, your backup goes with it. Or just put a backup on an external once a week or depending on how many times a week you use your Herdmaster so that if your computer crashes, not everything gets lost. I also, when I work on somebody's computer, I always make a backup. And then in your backup 
folder in your Herdmaster file. You'll see it. They, they get it gets too much. Um, it doesn't delete anything unless you delete it. So if you make a backup once a week, by the end of the year you're going to have 50 backups. You can delete the old ones. I usually say keep at least the last five, so that if the last one doesn't work, we have something to go back to. So very important, please make a backup. Um, back to adding an animal. When you add a new purchased animal, you're most probably not going to have the dam and the sire as part of your database, so that's fine. You do not have to enter them. If you want to enter them, as mentioned just now, you're first going to need to enter the dam and the sire, and then you would be able to add the animal. But you can leave the dam and the sire. It's not a must. Just keep note that if you're entering a purchased animal, you change the tag to what it is at the society. But then remember when you add a new calf, it's going to remember that tag that you've just entered. So just go and manually change that again. The screen is exactly the same um, as the second screen on adding a calf. Enter what is needed and then just save and finish. You'll see at the top, there's an option where it says current location. If it's a specific location and you know they're on camp four or whatever the case may be, you can change it, yeah. Otherwise, it's just set on default, which is also fine. When requesting data from the society initially to create your database. They, as far as I know, by default send only active animals and only three generations. If you want your inactive animals as well, you need to ask them to send your inactive animals as well. And I think they can go back to six generations. Just keep in mind, you're then going to have a whole bunch of animals. It's part of the pedigree that's not necessarily your animals which is not a problem. You can just make them inactive so you don't see them as part of your active screen. Any questions before I do the last part? Seems we're going to be finished just after 10. Okay, last thing that I want to show you for today is data entry. I have touched on it now for individual animals, but let me show you when you want to do it as a group. So the best is when you create your new calves, put them in a worksheet because you're going to work with them as a group. Next time you weigh them, they're in a group together already. You can find animals individually, it just takes long if your herd gets too big. Then you need to sift through 500 animals, which is just time consuming. So to enter weights for a group of animals, you would go to data entry, weights. Remember, look at your date. If you get a screen like this in Herdmaster, always do the right hand side first. I'm going to say it is a weaning weight, performance group, and then you can record the dam's weight with the calf as well as her condition score. If you select those blocks, you'll see that it gives you columns to do the dams as well. Performance group for the dam. Once this side is entered, let's go and find a worksheet. I'm not going to use all of the animals. I'm just going to select a few. You can also use a filter and then I'm to select the animals and move them to the right. If you forgot to enter a performance group, you've already moved the animals across and then you realize no performance group and you go and enter performance group then. This is going to be blank. You would need to change them individually. 
fastest option is at the bottom to say delete all. It's going to ask if you are sure, you just say yes. You're not deleting the animals, you're just clearing the screen. Enter your performance group and then move your animals across again. If you've entered this information and you didn't process, the next time you open the screen, the animals will still be here. So let's just enter. Okay, you see I've entered a weight now and it's saying to me that the values is outside of the parameters. That thing is in the way, I think it missed the one and it, it accepted 51. So I need to put in a weight between 150 and 350. If your animal is below 150, we can go and change that in your setup. Okay, yes, it missed my one. I'm just entering all the same. If you want to put any notes, then the dam's weight. And then her condition score. Just putting all of them the same. You see, it's already shown me a current average daily gain. Once everything's entered, you'll see it says it's not processed yet. Click on process. It will prompt if you're sure you want to do this. You say yes. Now it's saying, okay, it's added these weights to these animals and now it's giving me a warning. It doesn't like um, this animal, 19783. There's most probably not a, a dam entered or a society ID is missing, so it's not accepting that data. So you would go back go and check what the problem is, correct the problem. Usually it has to do with the society ID and the tattoo being missing. And then you would just, for that specific animal, go and enter the weights and process it and then close. Here is my animal that it doesn't like. Let's go and find that tag, 19783. open that calf and see what the problem is. The calf has all the IDs in. You'll see I have no dam and I have no sire. So it can't enter a dam's weight because there is no dam. I'm just, I'm not going to change that for now. Just refresh to see all the changes. Now that we've entered the weights, we need to send that to the society. Keep in mind that you need to send the calf and the dam's information separately. You can't send them as one file. What you would do then is click on reports, breed plan reports, weights and traits. From two observation codes, I'm going to say weaning to weaning because I just want to send weaning information. The date I used was the first. You can change the date. You'll see how it's selected on owner. That's where I mentioned just now, if it's on another owner, it's not going to bring up those animals. If you enter traits, you would select them here or on the next screen. So for now, I'm going to skip that. I'm going to find my worksheet. And let's say finish. It's complaining about one animal. I think I didn't choose this one just now. So you'll see you've got your weight, the date, and the tag, and this you would need to send to the society. When you send information to the society, what you're seeing is not what they're going to get. They're not going to get the, 
a file that looks like this. They will get it as a data file so that they can import it and not manually retype everything. If you send them information and something's wrong, they can't capture it. They will send you an email usually to tell you that they can't capture the data. If you can't figure out what the problem is, you just let me know and then we can just go and change it in your Herdmaster. When you send the information to the society, you would either use this envelope at the bottom or the globe. Windows has a problem on some accounts, not all of them. If you use the envelope, it gives you an error that says MAPI, M-A-P-I. Instead of using the envelope then, just use the globe. It will automatically put in the email address. If you have the wrong email address and you need to retype it every time, you can let me know, I can change that in the background for you. You'll put in your own email address so you would get a copy of the email that you've sent them. Type them a message and you can send it. Keep in mind that they do get a lot of emails. I usually tell the people to just type a message and ask them to confirm receipt of email. Give them about two, three weeks and then go and check if the data has been loaded. If not, just ask them again. Do not assume that they get your data. They get a whole lot of emails. Some of it goes to junk and you're assuming that they've got the emails and your data has been captured. And then after three months, you realize nothing's on and then there's a big problem. So don't assume that they got your email. Always ask them to just confirm with you that they did get your information. I'm not going to say send, I'm just going to say cancel. Uh, has it not been sent? I'm just going to say yes. The information hasn't been sent, now so I'm back to that screen. Now to enter a Try to do it the same as entering a weight. You would go to data entry traits. If this was a test, I'm just going to clear the screen. For traits, they standard traits that you can send to the society, which they record. You can also create your own trait if there's something that you want to keep record of. Keeping in mind, you won't be able to send it to the society, they're not going to be able to record it. First, do the right-hand side, remember your date, trait code, let's use hip height, observation code, let's say weaning again, performance group, let's keep it one. Worksheet, Going to use the last one again. I'm just going to take three animals, select them, move them across. Your animals would be grouped together and you would have weighed and measured all of them. So you would say select all and move them across. You'll see it shows you how many animals is in the screen. It's 24. If you know, oops, there should have been 26 animals. Just go and open your worksheet in your animal list and go and check which animals are missing. Then you need to enter your value. I know sometimes entering this and sending it to the society, it could be a mix up because you entered as centimeters and they went wanted as millimeters. Um, I can't remember what the range is. Let's just see. So it wants it between 80 and 180. So let's make it 80. And I'll show you on the report now. So I've entered it as centimeters. I'm going to say process. Let's just see which animals I used. It's not liking my values. Okay, it's a frame score that it's not liking. You'll see it says fail to add the frame score but it did add the hip height, which I wanted to show you. It has been sent because the screen or captured is blank. I'm not going to get into the frame score for now. I'm going to close the screen. Just going to refresh everything. And then we need to send those traits to the society. 
you would use the same process, except for selecting weight, you'll select traits. So you would go reports again, read plan, weights and traits. If you want to send something to the society and you don't have that envelope and globe at the bottom, you can't send it to the society. There's only specific reports you can send to the society. One last thing that I didn't show you is sending registrations to the society. I will show you that after this one. So observation codes I used was W2. If you generate your report and you know your hip parts have been captured and it's just giving you nothing, check your dates and check the observation codes that you've used, as well as ownership. Now, when sending it to the society, you can either select it here on hip height. If you select it on this screen, which is the one they usually use, it goes through to the society as millimeters. You can map it in your traits, and then it's part of this drop down. You just select HH, but it's not on you as a default because this one is the one that's mainly used. Let's go and find those animals. I think the one didn't have a dam in, but the other two should work. Okay, it's complaining about this animal because there's no dam, I'm just closing it. So you'll see, yeah, it has them as millimeters now that are captured as centimeters. So you would send it to the society like this. If they come back and say to you, no, we need it the other way around and you can't get it right, just let me know. I'll assist your other team viewer to do that. So you would use the globe then again to send the information to the society. And then one last thing is just sending the new calves to the society. So I just want to close this screen. That last calf that I added, I'm not going to use that cob, I'll just use random animals to show you. So what you would need to do to send new calves to the society, you would go to reports again, this time using society reports and either using registrations or electronic cancellations. I'm going to show you the registration. Let's just use my worksheet again. I'm only going to select a few of them. You would select all again, move them across, and then finish. You'll see it's got owner and breeder again. If it's under the wrong breeder selection, you're not going to uh, see those animals. So if that happens and you know the animal should be there and you can't figure out where the problem is, just let me know. Click on finish. complaining this animal doesn't have a sex code and has a sire with no society ID. You'll go back and fix that. Here is your calf registration screen. You've got the dam, the sire and the calf information. You would then use the globe to send again. If you are sending 50 animals and you know there should be 50 and you look at the number of animals at the bottom, and you see it's 49 or 48 or whatever the case may be, you know something's wrong somewhere. It needs to say 50. So it could be an ownership that's not correct. But if you can't figure out the problem, just let me know. Then you use the globe and you send it off to the society again. I'm not going to go further than that for today. Please use your Herdmaster if you have your own database created. Please work on it. If you've done something wrong, we can fix it. The demo database is also there so that you can work on it. No matter what you do with that data, it's not going to affect anything and it's not going to go anywhere. So you're welcome to play around with that data. Um, we will also load this video onto our YouTube channel. On our Herdmaster YouTube channel, there is uh, quite a few videos. 
Um, not everything's on there yet. I am making them as I go. The channel is relatively new. You can also look for tip sheets on our website. And it's those tip sheets that we put in the manual for training. And it's those tip sheets that I'm converting to small videos for the YouTube channel. Other than that, TeamViewer or AnyDesk. And then you can always email me or WhatsApp me. You're more than welcome to give me a call on WhatsApp or send a video or send a screenshot. I do not mind. It's the work cell number. Only thing is if I do not respond immediately, I'm just busy on another call. We are currently still working from home. We're only going into the office once a week with the whole COVID thing. So all the phone calls are coming through to me to the cell number. Are there any questions? Yes, I've got a question again. Yes. Is there any way that a herd master can, for instance, give us the physical days to carving? That the cow, how many days she takes the, the days to carving? I know they just give EBVs. Okay. But is there any, any way that they can perhaps give us the data that the days that she takes two days to carving? Okay, let me quickly check for you. Um, there is reports, one of them does have days to carving on. Let me just quickly think which one. Production, let's quickly check that one. Okay, this is not a good example because it's test data. There's no calves on there. But on this report, you'll see it gives you the ID, if you've had a name in there, dam, sire, date of birth, age, age first calves, number of calves, your intercalving period, okay. as well as the day's last calf. Oh, all right. So this could be one to look at. It's report. Animal production, and then I used dam production. The okay. nice report to look at is if you go to animal reports and you go to phenotypical reports. It gives you the tag, date of birth, age first calf, intercalving, days last calf, number of calves. Current age, how many has been weaned, the surviving can you, rate. Can you just show me how to get to that one again, please? No problem. It's reports. Yes. And then you go down to phenotypical. Okay. Thank you. One thing I've realized that it seems Windows has an update out. And after your computer updates, and you go into your animal details screen and you open your weights. It says failed to load weights. Don't panic. It's a full stop and a comma um, problem. It usually is set on a full stop. And then the update happens and for some reason it gets switched to a comma. Okay. Go to view edit animals. You are able to see those weights. Right. But easiest is to just let me know. I'll log onto your computer and run a little script that the program has made for me to fix that problem. So if you get failed to load weights, don't worry, nothing's lost. It's just a full stop and a comma problem. Keep in mind, Herdmaster uses your computer settings. The date format and the decimal formats, it uses your computers and doesn't use its own. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Sorry, I just want to see if maybe somebody WhatsApped a question. Um, Janine, I see um, there is another question um, from Tepo. I'm going to unmute you and then you can ask your question. Um, please on. Uh, Hi. Um, 
yeah, I'm trying to unmute him still. Um, you can try to unmute yourself. It's not allowing me to unmute you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, just wanted to know if uh, it's possible to connect the, uh, like upload information when you do data entry, specifically the weights, directly from the electronic scale and the reader. Okay. You can, you have two options to do that. The electronic readers and the scales can export a CSV file. You can import a CSV or Excel file into Herdmaster using, we call it the universal file import utility. There is a YouTube video on that. Okay. You can import it that way. Your second option is if you connect them with Bluetooth. This could be very tricky. Bluetooth can give you a whole lot of problems, but once it's connected, usually it remembers that connection. So you would take your computer with your Herdmaster and you would go sit at the crush. You connect your reader and your scale via Bluetooth to your computer. And what happens then is you open your Herdmaster and you open on your left side, it's called crush side recorder, and you open that feature. So when you scan the electronic ID of the animal, initially you would need to go and find which visual ID that animal belongs to. But the next time you scan that electronic ID, it will bring up an animal. And then if you do not have a scale, you can manually enter the weight. If you have the scale, the animal will get onto the scale and it will record the weight. Animal goes off, next animal. You scan the animal again, record the weight, next animal. So that is your second option on how to do it. I know not everybody likes using the computer at the crash, so they then rather just use the CSV import files, but that's completely up to you. Okay. No, thank you. No problem. If you look on the YouTube channel, there's a video called, I think it's Okabra Brahman, where we went to Meki Schneider in Namibia, and he uses it with a Bluetooth connection. Um, it's just fo a photo video, but you'll see more or less how it works. Any other questions? Depending on feedback, I am looking at having another Zoom training in about two, three weeks. Um, you're welcome to WhatsApp me if there's specific things that you want me to go through. Otherwise, I will go through, let's say, matings and multi-sires, how to do the traits, because that is tricky. And then maybe the universal file import, but you can let me know if there's any specifics and then I can work around that. Also, don't worry bothering me. If you start off with Herdmaster, usually people phone me 10 times a day. It's fine. Rather phone me as you go. Don't leave it because then you just forget where you were. Phone me as you go. That's the only way to learn. Um, the other option I do is I just make a short WhatsApp video. Then um, you have something to refer back to if you've forgotten how to do something or what I said. Any other questions? Um, yeah, I think I'll let you okay. Okay. Thanks very much for listening. We'll upload the video at the latest 
tomorrow onto the YouTube channel as well. And then please contact me if you're stuck and let me know if there's any specifics that you want me to mention in the next one. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.